And I'm going to bring you a Bible message on a subject you rarely hear preachers talk about, uh, or anybody else for that matter. But turn your Bible to second, uh, let's start with Song of Solomon, chapter number 8, uh, the book of Song of Solomon, chapter number 8, and uh, we'll start there this morning, and then I'll give you a bunch of other scriptures also. Um, Song of Solomon, chapter number 8, and look at verse number 6, and if you look at verse number 6, um, there's a verse there that says, in that verse, jealousy is cruel as the grave. See that? That's Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 6. Am I right about that? Somebody tell me. All right, now turn, while, I'm, while you're doing that, turn to Proverbs chapter 14. And we'll, we'll look at Proverbs 14 just a second this, this morning. And um, there's another verse there that says, Envy is the rottenness of the bones. My goodness. Uh, I don't know. That's a horrible, awful thing to say. Now I've got a little picture here for you that I want you to look at this morning. And uh, no... This is not Brother Jimmy before he can put his makeup on. Uh, I've got a picture here this morning I want you to look at, and I want you to look at this while I preach. And this is what I'm going to preach about today, and it's, it's this. That right there is a monster. And if you'll notice, that monster has green eyes. Uh, I can't say too much about that. Uh, but I'm going to call this message... The green-eyed monster. The green-eyed monster. The green-eyed monster is what me and you know as jealousy. The Bible said as cruel as the grave. And over the years, jealousy has somehow or another took on this persona and this uh, picture of a green-eyed monster. You ever heard anybody say he just turned green with, with envy and jealousy? Well, that's what I want to preach about today. The green-eyed monster. Now, by way of introduction, you got to understand, in the Bible, there is two kinds of jealousy. There is actually a good kind of jealousy, a godly kind. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11, 2, I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. So there is a godly jealousy that a man has for his wife. A man, a man who's not jealous over his wife and family, I mean, he, he ain't right. There is a good, godly jealousy. The Lord himself is jealous. And he said back there in Exodus 20 and verse 5, The Lord thy God is a jealous God. That's the verse of scripture that the devil used to knock Oprah Winfrey off the track. She was sitting in church one Sunday, and the preacher read that verse, and she and the, and the evil spirit spoke to her because she didn't know the Bible, and said, God is jealous? And she said right then she began to question God. And now she believes, if you believe this microphone stand is right, in your mind it is right. Uh, that's what she believes. She's off, way off. She was seduced by an evil spirit. And uh, the, she didn't understand the Bible. Nobody taught it to her evidently, so she didn't know that there is a God. The Lord is, you say, what's God jealous of? He's jealous over his name. The Bible said he's jealous over his land. And he's jealous over his people. That's right. And uh, so uh, I wouldn't be messing with that land over there if I was the New Agers. That's God's land, and he's jealous over it. But actually, in the Bible, jealousy, the word jealousy is only in that bad context one time. That time I showed you there in Song of Solomon. The rest of the time, the Bible uses the word envy. And always envy is in a bad context in the Bible. Always. That's what I'm going to try to stay on that track this morning, but because of our society and the way we use those two words interchangeably, um, I'll, I'll probably say a lot about, about jealousy. Envy. Uh, this, church, this sin is called the curse of Christianity. It's split more churches than nearly any other sin here in this country. And, uh, it's called, and they're responsible for a lot of other sins that we'll talk about. Envy is the daughter of pride the author of murder uh, and revenge. It's the beginner of secret sedition, the tormentor of virtue, the slime 
of the soul. Venom, poison. It consumes the flesh and rottens the bones, according to the Bible. Now, what is envy? Are you ready? Here's the definition. Now, everybody needs to hear this. Jealousy, envy. It is the feeling of discontent or ill will when you hear of another's success, progress, possessions, or some advantage that they've got. Now, everybody think with me just for a second. All you mamas and daddies and people who think you will never do nothing wrong. All of you people who are perfect, not like the rest of us sinners. Envy is the feeling of ill will. Ugh. When you hear about somebody else on your level accomplishing, gaining, or getting an advantage. Lord, it's quiet in here this morning. And it's going to get quieter. You say, I know, I know 99% of you people say, no, I don't have no problem with that. I'm not jealous. Okay, is there anybody in the world that you don't like? Okay, that's who you're jealous of. <laughs> Nine times out of ten. You heard that old saying said the beauty pageants didn't start in Los Angeles and Hollywood. Beauty pageants started the second, the second woman showed up on this earth. I'm going to tell you something, girls. Being jealous of a pretty woman don't make you a bit prettier. Well, well, here we go uh, this morning. People are eat up with this. Uh, the United States, churches, uh, 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 where you work, businessmen, preachers, singers are eat up with jealousy in this country. Now, the reason I ask you to talk about who you hate me to go because this is a very hard sin to admit. It's very hard to admit. I've, I've counseled people by the hundreds, and they'll say, well, I just don't rock her. I said, uh, I say, are you jealous of No. Why would I be jealous of her? See, I mean, it's oozing out of them. I mean, it's so evident. And the problem is you're jealous of people, and you don't even realize it, and you would die before you would admit that you're jealous over them. Now, we're going to talk about it from the Bible, and I'm going to show you. Uh, these people in here, oh, Lord, you'd never get drunk. You wouldn't smoke a joint if your life depended on it. No way to get you to steal uh, uh, money from your employer, but your eyes are just like that monster right there, and he dwells within you. And so I'm going to talk about it this morning. I'll tell you some Bible stories. Uh, we'll, we'll look at uh, a few things like that. And the story of Cain and Abel. When Cain saw that his brother was accepted and blessed by God, and he wasn't, uh, you can't tell me that jealousy didn't play a big part in the murder of that first boy, Abel. Oh, Cain was over here, you know, and he was over here. They both went to the same church. Both had the same uh, God. Both had the same mom and daddy. But, but old Cain, he was over here, and he run his fruit stand. And he, he offered to God. He had all his fruit over here, and he was saying, God, accept me. God, accept me. And old Abel, all he did was went over here, and he got the blood of the lamb. Uh, don't say it's a lamb, but I believe it was. And they, they brought, he brought the blood of the animal, and he put it out there. And they both went to church that day and said, Lord... Here, here's my sacrifice for my sin. And, and, and Cain said, here's my sacrifice for my sin. And about that time, pow, lightning came down. Burn up that sacrifice. And God said, your sins are gone, Abel. I've took you in. And he went, whoo, glory to God, hallelujah, I'm saved. And, and, and Cain said, uh, 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 okay, okay, Lord, uh, here I am. I, See me, see me. And the Lord said, uh, I've accepted you, Abel. And Cain said, uh, but Lord, what about, Lord, I, and he said, I've accepted Abel. And you know what Cain did? And instead of, instead of going and selling his fruit and buying him some blood, or getting him an offering of a sacrifice, or offering him, uh, buying him a lamb to sacrifice, he looked over to his brother and said, I can't stand him. I just, can't, I just don't like him. Why don't you like him? I don't know. I just don't like him. He, he thinks he's better than everybody over our shouting. What's he got to shout about? I'm just as good as he is. The truth is, he was just as good as he is. But Abel had one thing Cain didn't have, the blood that covered his sin. And he got extremely jealous. Religious jealousy is probably the worst kind of jealousy there is. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. And he said, how could he got God's blessings and I didn't? And he wound up killing 
threatened him. Murder, people. Murder. I'm telling you, it caused Korah to lie about Moses. It caused Joseph's brothers. I mean, that story. Read them stories. God put them in the Bible for our example that we wouldn't fall after the same sin that they did. Old Joseph come down there. He couldn't help it if he had dreams. I mean, he didn't plan them dreams. He come down there and he said, I've had a dream. They said, what'd you dream? He said, I dreamed uh, that uh, my sheep was over here and all the you know, 11 sheep bowed down in front of me. And the moon, the stars come down. And they, they said, I don't know who you think you are, you little brat. You're, you're the youngest one of us except for a baby brother. And I'm telling you, we hate you. And I'm, we, you, you have no right saying, you're even saying mom and daddy is going to bow down to you. And he said, I, I just dreamed it. And they said they despised him. They were jealous that God had blessed it, it's like you when your neighbor, nothing will make your car look worse except your neighbor getting a new one. And boy, your car gets off on you. And there he comes in his new car. And there he goes. And he'll, Listen, our country is being eat alive uh, with this thing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and, and the man, uh, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. I was in, uh, I was in the... Uh, Barbershop one day. Barbershop or where men gossip, you know. Uh, women get accused of it a lot, and they do it. Plenty of it. But men do it in the barbershop. And there's some of the old gossiping, old jealous, old, old wicked, pride-filled men hanging around the barbershop. And I was sitting there one day years ago when I was up in Marion. And uh, a guy's cutting my hair, and he said, How's your church doing, Danny? And I said, Doing great. We're having a good time. Lord's blessing. We ain't batting a thousand, uh, but we're getting something. And he said, Well, there was a preacher in here the other day day that said, yes, his church is growing, but it's growing at the expense of the other churches. And I thought, oh yeah, whatever. You know, and I, I, th- I felt sorry for that preacher who said that. I said, the truth is, there's tons of people getting saved at our church that go to the other church. They're probably being blessed uh, as, a, as, a, as a result of what's going on here. There was a great preacher years ago by the name of F.B. Meyer. I'm sure you know about F.B. Meyer. He pastored in England. There was a great preacher in America at the same time named G. Campbell Morgan. And Morgan was preaching in America, and F.B. Meyer was preaching in England at the same time the great Charles Spurgeon had the London Tabernacle, and he was preaching also. Now, now G. Campbell Morgan took a church in London that was close to F.B. Meyer's church. And that preacher, that preacher, F.B. Meyer, he said, suddenly... He said it was easy for me to pray for him when he was over in America. Wasn't bothering me. Wasn't getting my church members. But as soon as he came to England, I found it hard to pray for F.B. Meyer. And he said I was eat up with a feeling of Oh, he's going to come over here and all my church members are going to like him better than they do me and they're going to think he's a better preacher than I am. Now, you ain't to even think about Christians acting like this, but this is the way people do. There's so much jealousy between preachers and churches. We're cutting our own throat, brother. We don't have to worry about the world messing with us. As a matter of fact, the world never can tear up a church. The devil gets on the inside of the church and tears up the church. And you know what he said? He said, I made up my mind I wasn't going to live like that. I'm not going to live being jealous. I got Spurgeon on one side of me and uh, G. Campbell Morgan on the other side. And he said, I called him up and said, we're glad to have you in our community and I want you to come and preach for me sometime." And he said, I had, and he said, you know what happened? He said, God used them men so much, they had so many saved that our church caught the overflow and filled up, and God blessed all three of us. But if he hadn't have done that, he would have been eat up with jealousy. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening this morning? I'm telling you, preachers, there'll be a lot of preachers here this program, uh, on my radio program and on, the, on YouTube, a lot of preachers will hear this. And I'm telling you, preachers, the greatest enemy of another preacher is a preacher is another preacher. That's right. Amen. Uh, J. Frank Norris said, the worst enemy a preacher has is is high society women and jealous preachers. The high society women hate him because they can't control him.
And they can't tell him. He's not the speaker at their bridge parties. And he's not their after dinner speaker. They can't do nothing with him. They hate him because of that. And the preachers are jealous of him because God's blessing him. And God's hands on him. And God, God's hand be on them to get their heart right and do the right thing. There is no room in our life for jealousy, people. Jealousy. And, and since we're talking about religious jealousy, let me just move on right quickly and say this. Do you realize, do you realize, do you realize that jealousy, envy, was responsible for the greatest and worst sin ever been committed in history when they nailed Jesus Christ to the cross? You didn't know that. Matthew chapter number 27. The Bible said, for envy they delivered him. People, can I tell you something this morning? It wasn't drunks that had Jesus nailed to the cross. It wasn't drug dealers that had him nailed to the cross. It wasn't prostitutes. It wasn't murderers. It was the most high, big shot religious leaders of that time. They hated him. They was jealous of his power. They was jealous of him. Who are you jealous of this morning? That woman at work? Somebody down the road's got a little bit more than you do. I remember in school, at school, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, new family had moved, brother and sister, and if the girl was pretty, all the girls in the class hated her. Ugh, I don't like her. Why? I don't know. They don't even know. They don't even realize that's what it is. Why don't you like her? She makes me sick. Hollywood's eat up with stuff like that. All them movie stars are all jealous of each other. If you're in a certain kind of business, you'll be jealous of the other guy or he'll be jealous of you. If you're in the ministry, same thing, whatever's your peers, whoever's on your level. I mean, it'll eat you up. The Lord had those men. They turned him over and they said, listen, they said, we want you to crucify him. It was the religious leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees. Old Pilate, he even tried to get, get out of it. He washed his hands and said, look, you can count me out of this. I don't want no part in this. But those religious leaders, they looked at him. They said, we can't stand people following him and not us. We can't stand the way people are loyal to him. We can't stand the way he has that power he can just let's just kill him envy was the responsible for the greatest sin that's ever been told in this world there's a famous story about a story in ancient Greece and in ancient Greece they had these they had these um, contests like like uh, games you know the Olympics like that a long time ago and this guy won them and they made a statue of him and put it in the middle of the town. And Brother Jim, they put that statue up there, and it was an honor, a shrine to that guy, and his main rival absolutely hated it. He hated it. And he said, I'm going to get rid of that thing if it's the last thing I ever do. And he went down there sneaking around at night, and he took a chisel and stuff, and he's trying. he said, I'll get rid of it, I'll beat it. And, he broke, and it fell on him and killed him. That's what jealousy will do in your life. It'll kill you. It's a cancer. Let me, let me just give you some quotes right quick. Nothing makes you, uh, uh, your car look worse than seeing your neighbor in a new one. No person usually criticizes the people he likes, the people he's not jealous of. Usually the people you criticize are secretly your enemies. If you're green with envy, you're ripe for trouble. Envy provides the mud that failure throws at success. Envy provides the mud that failure throws at success. Instead of letting your light shine, some people spend all their time putting other man's light out. I know of preachers, I listen to preaching all the time. I know preachers very well. I know hundreds of them personally. I know about all the doctrines, all the different beliefs. I've studied it since I was 19 years old. And I know there are preachers who all the ministry they have is tearing down all the other preachers. And, and if it wasn't for that, they would have no ministry. All their ministry is is so-and-so's wrong on this, so-and-so's wrong. And what, they're mad because so-and-so's got a following. So they think if I tear him down, I'll be 
they look bigger, and they're wasting their time. They're full of the devil. I, I'm telling you, they got that fellow right there living on the inside of them, the green-eyed monster. Envy is to the soul what sickness is to the body. You, envy is usually the mother of gossip. Did you hear about so-and-so? They got? Well, in my opinion, they didn't deserve it. You know, this Cleveland Cavaliers, Sam Warriors, all the gang, you, that room's so full of jealousy, you can cut it with a knife. When they have them big Emmy Awards and the Grammy Awards in Hollywood, there's women sitting back there gritting their teeth. There, there's a lady, woman, female, Christy Sheets, uh, uh, down in uh, Texas, 42 years old. You might have saw this on news all over the country. She murdered with a gun her two daughters. 22 and 17 years old. This was a nice-looking lady, 42 years old. She actually showed her picture. Actually, she was a nice, attractive lady to be 42 years old. And she got mad, and she literally hated her daughters. Her daughters were pretty. Although, listen, when you're a mama, when you're a mama and your head is so messed up and you're so full of the devil that you get jealous of your own daughter getting dates, you are a sick individual. I mean, there's something bad. I mean, this woman was so jealous of her own daughters, she took a gun on their daddy's birthday and shot and killed. She's like, I'm getting wrinkles. I'm getting wrinkles. More Botox, more Botox, more Botox. Her belly button was right here. Uh, by the time she got through with it, I'm telling you, brother, and she and took a gun and shot shot and killed her two daughters. Now, ladies, let's get this straight here. You are getting older and uglier every day. Some of you peaked out when you was 14, and it's downhill from then on. Some of you hung on to your 25 or 30. Being beautiful is not the only thing in this world. Lord have mercy. You ought to see the look on some of y'all. Husbands punching them and, and, and everything else. Listen, being beautiful, and you ain't going to stay beautiful. You better just get pretty to the Lord and stay faithful to your husband and keep that gleam on your face and get God on you or you're going to wind up a jealous old bitty. Scared you, didn't I? Ha, 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 ha. Well, I'm about had a heart attack back there. I, I'm telling you, brother, listen, envy. The, the prodigal son's homecoming party was ruined because of his jealous brother. He comes walking in and says, he said, why ain't you at your brother's party? Because daddy made a big kill the fatted calf and everything else for my brother, and he ain't worth a dime. Been out there wasting his life uh, with, with riotous living. He come in, everybody throws a big party for him. I serve you all the time. Fussed at his daddy. How many family fights do you know? Because somebody jealous of somebody else, or mom and daddy bought them a car, and they didn't get me a car, or as nice a car, or they spent more money on my sister than they did me. Or you look, I saw you look at her. You used to look at me like that. Lord have mercy, it's getting quiet in here. And I, I ain't going to give them an invitation. Ain't nobody going to come to the altar and admit to that, are they? There's many women who are jealous of their own daughter who are pretty and smart. You had your chance, sister. You had two or three years there where you was all right, and it's over. It's gone. <laughs> if you as high as pretty as you think you are, magazines would be calling your house. Somebody told you you was pretty, and it went to your head. Amen. Amen. J. Frank Norris, the great independent Baptist preacher, they hated his guts. He's responsible for more of the great big soul winning churches than any other one man, humanly speaking, in this country. And he said, when somebody's jealous of you, it's for one of three reasons. It's because you have more, you know more, or you, you, you do more. Have more, know more, or do more. Envy shoots at the other person and wounds itself. Who is it you're jealous of this morning? I'm not jealous. You're never going to get any help till you admit it. Just admit it. You're jealous. No, it's just she thinks she... No, no. Ain't got nothing to do with what she thinks. You are jealous of her or him. 
All right, we got that fixed. You've admitted you got a problem. You ain't going to get no help till you admit you've got a problem. You wouldn't get drunk for a thousand dollars, would you? Some of you'd pay a thousand to get drunk. But you're full of this sin. You're full of this sin. Here's your, here's your cure, and I'll give it to you quick, and I'm done. Number one, admit it. Admit it. The hardest thing to do is admit it. Oh, I'm not jealous. She's like, no, 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 no. Say, I'm, I'm jealous, okay? I'm jealous, preacher. James chapter 4 and verse 13 said, But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, you, we glory and we lie not against the truth. Glory not and lie not against the truth. That means quit shouting and throwing up your hands saying hallelujah when you got bitter envy in your heart. That would kill most camp meetings dead in 4 o'clock. I know preachers, Lord, I, the reason I keep missing preachers is because I am one. I'm around preachers all the time. I know preachers that won't go to certain meetings because they're jealous of this preacher and jealous of that preacher and probably won't support missionaries. And probably, uh, they're, they're just, and they say, well, I, I just don't find out, blah, 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 blah. And the whole problem is they're jealous of them. Lord, I know preachers that are, that are, that are, Lord, they won't have, I know preachers that won't, Call on somebody to pray. I know preachers. I know preachers. If you have a camp meeting and uh, you ask them to preach in the morning service and another preacher at night service, they say, right, "Never mind, I ain't coming," because he gets to preach at night and I have to preach in the morning. Well, thank God you're not going to preach. Amen. Hallelujah! We don't have to listen to a jealous, prideful preacher that's full of the devil. Amen. Listen, people. God knows our heart. God, you know what I've done last night? When I was studying this, I had to search my heart. And I said, Lord, who am I jealous of? And I started thinking, this person, that person. And I started thinking, when somebody mentions that preacher, sometimes I go, Ugh. you do that? Do you do that? That little feeling comes in. Did you hear about how the Lord blessed him? Yes, I heard. Hallelujah. We said die. Yeah, that's, what, that's what you're thinking. <laughs> now you're understanding me, ain't you? Admit it. Number two, pray it out. You know that lady at work you hate? Why don't you go take her a gift certificate to the steakhouse tomorrow? Ugh. Come on, preacher. Don't, don't, you're getting ridiculous now, ain't you? <laughs> well, I don't know, just suggest, you never know. You never know. Pray it out. Few men, listen to this quote, few men have the strength to honor another man's success without envying them. Few men, and hardly no ladies, have the strength to admit another person's success without envying them. Number three, get it right with God. Get it right with God. Just like any other sin. Just like lying or committing adultery. Say, God, I'm a, sin, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Get this wicked sin out of my heart. And number four, refuse to let it dominate you. Psalm 37 said, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious of the wicked. They shall soon be cut down with the grass. I heard about this preacher. And uh, some, some preacher come, he's running about 200. And this other preacher come to town and was pastoring a mega church, and they run way up in the thousands. And he said every, every Sunday he he couldn't even hardly get to his church fighting the crowd, them people going to that other church. And he said by the time he got to church, his back slid and full of the devil. He, the Lord couldn't even bless him. And I thought of the thousands and thousands of preachers that live like that all the time, businessmen. School kids, eat up with it. Let's all get together and hate her because she's pretty. Let's all get together and hate the rich kid. And you know what that preacher did? He had a special day, and he invited that preacher of that big church to come over and speak. And he asked everybody to pray for him and bless him. He said, the devil said, now, if you get him to come over here and speak, all your people are going to leave and go over to his church. But he said, I'm not going to live like this. I'm not going to live like this jealousy eating me alive. You know what, You know how you know you're jealous of somebody? When somebody tells you something good happened to them and something in you just sort of goes, Phew. Phew. I hate them. 
We said, die. You don't say that. But it, you'd feel good if something bad happened to them. That's jealousy. That's jealousy. It's quieter than a turkey farmyard on Thanksgiving Day. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. She's going to come and pray. You come on. She's coming to play this morning. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed. The green-eyed monster will inhabit and ruin your life if you let it. Every head bowed and every eye closed. All right? You can come to the altar and pray if you want to, but I'm going to ask you, who's that person or persons that you're jealous over? If you're an athlete, it's probably other athletes. If you're a preacher, it's probably other preachers. If you're a, a work 